Hello everyone, Dean Dwyer here for the Bible Bites series. If you ever wondered in each of the videos, or I try in each of the videos, to have the cross in view, it is a personal preference. In my life, I always like to have the cross in view because that brings perspective into my life. And I trust that's a word of encouragement for many of you as well. I know that many are suffering in isolation because of this virus. And I just want you to remember that we always need to have the cross in view. That'll bring perspective into our life. That'll bring encouragement into our life as we can hold the Lord very close to us. Well, today's question is, why did Jesus wash people's feet? When you read John 13, 1 through 17, we see the record of Jesus watching the feet of the disciples in the upper room during the Last Supper. And in fact, if we look at that act, it displayed absolute humility and servanthood, all of this from the Lord Jesus Christ. But how should it be that the Son of God, the Messiah, should wash the feet of mortal and sinful men? Well, we would say that only true love, humility and servanthood would complete such an act. Well, Jesus' attitude of servanthood was in direct contrast to that of the disciples who had recently been arguing amongst themselves as to which of them was the greatest. You can read that in Luke twenty-two twenty-four. And since there was no servant present to wash their feet, it would never have occurred to them to wash each other's feet. Well, when the Lord himself stooped to this lowly task, they were stunned into silence. To his credit, though, Peter, who was profoundly uncomfortable with the Lord Jesus Christ washing his feet, and we know a person who was never at a loss for words, said, you shall never wash my feet. Well, then Jesus said something that must have further shocked Peter. He said, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. You can read that in John 13, 8. Well, this prompted Peter, whose love for the Saviour was genuine, to then request a complete washing. Well, it was at that point Jesus explained the true meaning of being washed by him. See, Peter had experienced the cleansing of salvation and did not need to be washed again in the spiritual sense. Salvation is a one-time act of justification by faith, but the lifelong process of sanctification is one of washing from the stain of sin that we experience as we walk through the world. Well, this truth is just one of several from this incident that Christians ourselves in this age can apply to our own lives. First, when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ for the washing of our sins, we can be sure and certain that it is, it is permanent and it is complete. No act can cleanse us further from our sin. Our sin has been exchanged for the perfect righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. You can read that in 2 Corinthians 5.21. But we do need continual cleansing from the effects of living in the flesh in a sin-cursed world. And that is why 1 John 1.9 is so very important to the Christian life. I encourage you to read it. If you don't know what 1 John 1.9 says, read it. Apply it daily to your life so that you can keep a sure account with the Lord. So the continual washing of sanctification is done by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we know the Holy Spirit lives within us. And through the washing of water by the word, as Ephesians 5.26 says. Well, that's given to equip us to do every good work. 2 Timothy 3.16-17. to 17. Well, further, when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, he told them, and he tells us as well, I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. John 13, 15. Well, as his followers, we are to emulate him. We are to become more Christ-like in our walk. That's why God uses the experiences of the world. He uses his word to shape us. And in serving him, we are to serve one another with the same characteristic, with the same spirit in lowliness of heart and mind, seeking to build one another up in humility and love. See, it's when we seek preeminence, that's when it displeases the Lord, because he promised that true greatness in his kingdom is attained by those with a servant's heart, as he did. You can read that in Mark 9.35 and Mark 10.44. Well, when we have that servant's heart, that is when the Lord 
He's most pleased. And as he promised, we'll be greatly blessed because of that. We read that in John 13, 17. So why did Jesus wash people's feet? Well, to show us an example of humility, servanthood and love. It does not mean that we must wash the feet of everyone that we come across in this world, but we can apply this symbolically. To apply this principle by showing the characteristics of Christ for all, not just believers, but also unbelievers that we come across. To show them love, to show them humility and to show them the servanthood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I trust that answers the question. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you again next time.